catapults. A magnificent creation terrorizing the battlefield for thousands of years. A ballistic device used to launch huge rocks and other projectiles a great distance with only the use of stored potential energy. But has a catapult ever been supersonic? Well that's the plan for today to see just how fast I can catapult one of these ammunition types. So without mucking about, let's get into it. I decided to go small with the first build just to kind of test out the mechanics. As you can see, I only have one hinge there to kind of turn the vehicle. I also have two springs and one steering hinge, and that is what I use to catapult the rock ahead of me. I feel like this next design closely resembles a trebuchet. I have a swivel on the post that allows it to freely spin, and then I have two springs that are pulling it down thus launching the ball as far as it will let me. I decided to add some rope with a quick release to kind of help with the tension and make firing a little easier and hopefully this boulder goes a little bit farther. And fire! Oh, looks like we overshot it which is both good and bad. All I need to do now is just make this thing mobile so I can aim it. Here we have essentially the same concept as the last one. I have the two springs in the front, the one rope in the back, and the only difference is instead of the swivel, I have the hinge instead. And the moment of truth. That actually went really far. I'm kind of surprised. I definitely want to do better than that. Hopefully this is far enough. Maybe we can hit it from here. Ali oop. Man, we were not too far off. I just need to find the right distance and it's all mine. Let's try that again. Nope. All right, here we go. Yeah, all right, let's try another design that I have in mind. This next design was honestly the worst uh, out of all of them, despite it looking really cool in my head. I struggled to keep the mine in the holder and I didn't brace it well enough so every time I pulled the springs it bent like crazy and every time the mine fell out uh, I was left with a destroyed machine. I tried to add braces and it honestly didn't help out very much at all. I even tried to shoot it in different ways by launching the quick release first or tightening the springs first. I honestly could not get this thing to fire. The only thing that I really liked about it is that I have a steering column and a steering hinge, which allows me to move it up and down and side to side. So as far as aiming wise, this would be the best for aiming. It just doesn't shoot. Just when I thought I was out of ideas, I was watching one of my favorite YouTubers stuff made here. He used all the tools in his shop to make a little slingshot. One of the concepts was using centrifugal force in order to propel the little ball. So that's what I'm going to try. Look at this behemoth. Let's go ahead and wind it up and see what happens. Oh! 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 oh. Now that is what I'm talking about. I'm just going to add some braces to keep it from falling apart again. The only thing I don't like about doing this is it adds more weight and it just is so hard for this thing to spin up and stay in one spot. It, I had to make it super big just to keep it from spinning. Turns out one brace on each side it was still not enough to keep it from falling apart. It also broke a lot just when I took it out of the pause menu. There was just so much weight on it it kept breaking. How it works is there's a spinning weight in the middle to provide counter torque. I have a speedometer on the top wheel that's dictating to the sensor when to let go of the ball. So whenever the arm is spinning at whatever speed I want it to, it will trigger the sensor and when the ball goes over the sensor, it lets it go. After a few more failed attempts, I decided to add a couple more braces. I also adjusted the sensor a little bit because it wasn't letting go at the right time. And after a few more tweaks, I finally got something that resembles a weapon. Look at that. Although it didn't always do what I wanted it to do, it started looking better and better. And I started being able to throw these things super far. I mean, look at that. Holy cow. Despite my best efforts to try and hit this little house, I couldn't hit the broad side of a barn, if I, mu if I must be honest. I decided that it was just more fun to see how fast I could make it go. 
I mean, I definitely got a lot of enjoyment seeing it fly all the way to the other side of the map. So I took it out here to this grand expanse so that I could just work on making these go as fast as possible. For the most part, I wouldn't say that it went very well. I will say that it was extremely fun. I definitely wanted to figure out how I could optimize this because, you know, it didn't really work half the time or most of the time, but when it did work, it was absolutely fantastic. I was able to launch these things all the way to the mountains. I definitely wanted to make it go faster and faster. I knew that the only way that I could do that is by making the arms of the spinner longer, but that just means more weight, and we just can't have that. Nonetheless, I was shooting these pretty far, but I wanted to take it up a notch, so I present to you the brand new spinning whatever you want to call it catapult is what it's supposed to be i replaced the beams with sliders and then i connected the sliders to the wheels with springs and let me tell you those hold on for dear life i can spin this thing so fast it is absolutely insane however i did still encounter some torque issues and couldn't stop myself from spinning. This component is made up of four spinning wheels. The two inner wheels are automatically spinning and the two outer wheels only spin when I press right trigger. The very bottom has weights on it so that I can kind of counteract the weight on the top and the blades of the wings are just supposed to cut through the air in a nice flat manner to try and stabilize it as much as possible. But it's the same exact setup as the last time with the sensor and the speedometer. I've also set it up so that I could tilt it about 20 degrees forward or backward. That's about as far as I can go before the arms start touching the ground and blowing up behind me. I also have the wheels allocated to the joysticks so that they turn like a tank. When I press forward, I go forward. When I press backward, I go backward. When I turn right, each side of the wheels turn in an opposite direction so that I could actually turn in place. Now let's see what this puppy's capable of. Oh my goodness, this thing is a freaking monster, I mean, oh my goodness, holy cow. <laughs> so because Besieged is awesome, one of the blocks you can use is a camera block, and I can place them on the projectile so we get to actually see what they see. Alright, let's tilt this puppy back up, 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 nope, oh, that's what I'm talking about with stability. And any second now holy crap and, oh wow we actually hit a game barrier wow i am completely playing this clip at normal speed it is not sped up at all tell me if you can see it and it's gone now i'm left with two questions can I actually hit something with it? And how fast does it actually go? Well, to answer that first question, yes, I actually can hit stuff. And for your eyes to behold, let's check it out. This is once in full speed. I also have a clip that's almost exactly the same. It's not the same clip. The game speed itself is 50% of what it normally is. So there you go, two times in a row. No problem. Now we're gonna find out just how fast this goes. I use the dimensions of the little people. I honestly just wanna say that they're probably about five feet tall and they're about the same size as the tire. On the top of my machine, I have a tire that is nice and ready for us to be able to use to measure. And as we can see, one side is about five wheels long, which means it's 25 feet long. It also takes 12 out of 60 milliseconds in order to do one revolution, which is 20% of one second. So it goes around five times in one second. So with the diameter equaling 50 feet, multiplied by pi equals 157 feet. So that's how big the circle is. It goes around five times in one second, meaning that it goes around all 157 feet five times in one second. And that comes out to 758 feet per second or 516 miles an hour. Well, with all the measurements that we used, it turns out that it technically isn't going supersonic speed, uh, but we are just using fictional made up measurements. So there really is no telling how fast that this thing goes. It is definitely fun seeing this snipe objects all the way across the map, making it through cannons. 
I mean, this thing has been a blast. If you guys enjoyed, leave a comment, subscribe, like the video. As always, my name is The Mad Greaser, and y'all have a wonderful day. Peace!